Today we're going to be removing the gas tank from the 300J because we just don't know what might be inside of it. We have the car running with its new engine, but we've been feeding it off of an auxiliary tank. And it would be really sad to just assume you could put gas in the tank and it wouldn't be pumping rust, causing more problems. So we've got to take a look at the tank. So here we are running the car. And I notice that this one has a drain plug. If 64 has a drain plug, I'm betting that would be the last year. But I'll have to crawl under a 64 to find out. So anyway, I've drained the tank. I've pumped it dry. And now we're going to get up into the J-hooks, which you can see have been undercoated. So I'm going to take a wire brush on a drill and chew off the undercoating so that I can get these bolts to spin down on the J-hooks. And of course there's one on each side. Uh, this pipe that you're looking at is the vent. And that is the tank feed. We'll have to get the undercoating off of those rubber pieces, which are probably original, and get the undercoating off so that we can remove. Here we go. This is the ground strap that goes from the fuel sender to the fuel line. It's important that you uh, reinstall this when you get to the reinstallation point. Otherwise, you don't have a ground for your gauge to work. If you break these, because sometimes they are so rusted you can't do anything with them, there are new ones available. They're longer, but they'll work. And J-bolt. Even the nicest J-bolt you may fracture. Don't worry, you can get new J-bolts. If I need to mention words of caution, you are working around gasoline. Now if you'll notice I have a fluorescent light. You don't want to use an incandescent you know, they're just hot. If they break, they make a spark. And you're working around fuel. So work safe, work smart, be here for tomorrow. Here, I have the vent sawed through. And I have also sawed through the hose. And disconnected the fuel gauge sending line. I have one strap completely removed. I have the other one with the nut walked down so there's plenty of looseness. So the tank is ready to come down. Uh, as I said before, I have drained it. You've got to drain it in order to get the weight off of these things. Otherwise, you're going to end up with something on your chest that is way too heavy. So here you go. There's the tank down. You're looking at the trunk floor. Which on this car is nice and rust free. And here's your tank. You can see there's nothing special about the filler tube. Some cars, the filler tube detaches and you have a separate clamp of some kind up in the body that you have to tend to. So here's the gas tank. That is a sound deadener pad. If 
you want to make a new one or yours is missing, you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get roofing felt. It may be too thin, so use two layers. But if you don't put a piece of felt back in there, you can get drumming noises. So it's quick and easy, and you'll feel better after you do it. We are looking at the front end of the gas tank, and this is where the fuel sender is. So we've got to scrape this dirt away in order to expose the lock ring, which twists, and then this whole thing can be removed. This is the vet line. It connected to this pipe which was hanging up yeah, under the car. So here you go. I've cleaned it up, ready to tap off the ring and see what stories the tank may tell us. So you can kind of see there are three, there they are, raised sections that you can use to rotate the ring. And then it comes off. And the sender is now ready to be pulled out. Okie dokie. And you can see with some twisting, out comes the sender. They normally don't look this good. And now you can look into the tank to see what stories may wait. Holy moly, this tank looks like it's good enough to use. Quite a surprise. Now I've owned this car for 20 years and I stored it with a fuel tank empty in the garage and now I haven't touched it for 20 years. And that gas tank did not rust when it was empty. Other stuff that's handy to know. We're going to make new pieces for the tank sender and for the breather out of modern alcohol resistant fuel line. This diameter is 5 uh, You don't want 3 eighths. That is just too big. While we have the gas tank sender out, we're going to check it with the continuity meter for function. This rubber gasket that 
came out of here is 75 thousandths thick. That's 0 0.075. And the reason I mention that is because you might want to replace it. And here's a new locking ring with a gasket. I don't remember where I got this. But you can always do what I did and make your own. Now is also the time to check your fuel center float. You can get new ones. Uh, there is a Ford part number which I will look up and uh, either I will include it in the the title block or if I remember I'll give it to you here on tape but give that thing a shake or hold it under water and find out if you got bubbles because now's the time to replace it so I've got the voltmeter set up We're, we're something like a about a hundred in this position and you can see it's changed all the way down to oh I don't know 10 these things bounce all over but what you're looking for is is the resistance changing as you sweep it through Okay, I got 20 in this position. I'm going to swing it up. And she's reading eh, 80. This is how I remember them. 20 to 80 is a functioning fuel sender. This one's good to go back in. And here you go through the magic of time-lapse photography the gas tank reinstalled you can see I remembered to put on the ground line and we've got new rubber for the vent hose the vent hose does not have clamps on it and new rubber for the gas tank center While we are replacing fuel line hose, there are two more pieces that are often forgotten that need to be replaced. This, this is the front frame, and you can see the piece right here. This is found, there you go, just aft of the front wheel passenger side this is the line running from the tank and there is a line steel up inside of the stub frame that's one piece one more and the last piece of rubber fuel line that needs to be replaced. We're up in the engine compartment and this is the line that will go to the fuel pump inlet. You can see it right there. It comes out of the stub frame. Now, don't let this is the line that needs to be replaced. Don't let that line confuse you. That's a temporary line that I have going from my auxiliary fuel tank to the inlet of the fuel pump. 
normally this would be the line and yeah, it's hard as a rock needs to be replaced.